Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about persistence. During a pen test or a red team operation, persistence is a very important step because uh, not only getting access is important, but maintaining it is also very crucial. There are many opportunities uh, in SQL Server with, uh, let's say, uh, with startup uh, stored procedures, triggers, registry keys. Uh, all of these allow us to persist our privilege, our access onto the SQL Server. Now, SQL Server often runs as a privileged account, either local or global, making it very useful for persistence. More so, if the target instance is running as a domain user, which is a local administrator on some other machine, the persistence is most healthy. Why? We can simply add a sysadmin backdoor, let's say, on onto the SQL Server, and from there, we can pivot our way to other machines on the network with much uh, more stealth than directly accessing other machines on the network. What are our different options? Let's first talk about startup stored procedures. So what are startup stored procedures? Stored pro procedures, these are also called the uh, automatic, automatically executed stored procedures. Uh, what are these? If you mark a stored procedure for automatic execution and every time the SQL Server service starts, it is called a startup stored procedure. Now, sysadmin privileges are required to mark a stored procedure for automatic execution. And please keep in mind, such a stored procedure must be in the master database. It cannot have input or output parameters and can be owned only by SA or sysadmin. It gets executed with sysadmin privileges when SQL Server service is restarted. So a very potent reboot mechanism, uh, reboot persistence mechanism as well. So we can uh, simply create a stored procedure. Here we are. What we are doing, we are uh, whenever the SQL, what we want to do, whenever a C, the SQL server restarts, our par partial payload or script gets downloaded and executed in memory. So let's try this. First, let's uh, and we are assuming that XPCMD shell has already already been enabled. So let's first create the procedure. We are on 0 0.35, 0 0.35, where we already have sysadmin privileges. So on the master DB, let's create a procedure called SP underscore auto PS, which runs a CMD shell, XP CMD shell, and downloads and executes our PowerShell script. So let's create this procedure. It has been created. Now let's start our listener. Now, now once the procedure has been created, uh, we need to mark it for automatic execution. How we are doing it? Uh, we are modifying the proc option. We are using the SP proc option stored procedure. The name of the procedure is SP auto PS, which we created in the previous slide. Option is to start up and option value that is uh, run on on startup. That's, that's the meaning of uh, this query. Turn it on at the startup. So let's run this now. Whenever the SQL Server service restarts, our payload will get executed. Um, before we do that, let's have a look at the list of stored procedure marked for automatic execution to make sure that our stored procedure has been uh, is listed properly. Here it is. You may like to see the properties. So uh, this is the creation date uh, and that's it. So now we have our listener running here. Let's restart the SQL Server service. So we are doing it right now. We can assume that on a, on a regular maintenance, uh, whenever the service is restarted. Let's see if we get our stored procedure executed. There is a connect back and our procedure get, got executed. We are running as TB service on the 
of SQL SRP1 server. So quite easy and uh, very portable. You, we can use it uh, in, in different scenarios, however we want it. And this brings us to our next hands-on. Uh, that is to backdoor a SQL server to add sysadmin where SQL Server service is running as a domain user, which is a local admin on one or more boxes. So this is in sync with the uh, with the previous hands-on where we wanted our SQL Server service. Uh, we wanted to check if our SQL Server service has local admin privileges on one or more boxes. So uh, try it. Now there are another mechanism, other mechanisms of persistence like triggers. A trigger is a special kind of stored procedure that automatically executes when an event occurs in the SQL Server. There are three types of triggers, DDL or Data Definition Language Triggers, which get what gets executed on Create, Alter and Drop Statements and some stored procedures. Then there are DML, Data Manipulation Language Triggers, which execute on Insert, Update and Delete Statements. Then there are Logon tr Triggers, which execute on a User Logon. Both DML and DDL triggers execute under the context of the user that calls the trigger. Now let's first talk about DDL triggers. A DDL trigger can be used if no custom database exists on the SQL server. Please keep that in mind. That doesn't mean that if there is a custom database, you cannot use it, but it does not require a custom database. So you can use it even if there is no custom database on the SQL server. How do we use it? We are creating a trigger here, uh, taken from this blog. Uh, create trigger. The name of the trigger is persistence DDL1 on all server, or we can go for database here for DDL login events. So this is a group of events. So uh, this, these two uh, Microsoft links provide much more details about a particular event or a group of events. Uh, so there are uh, event groups like DDL all events, but that may uh, trigger your payload more than you, you desire it to be. So uh, go, go through these if you would like to customize, uh, write a custom uh, trigger. Otherwise, DDL login events uh, work, uh, work quite uh, good for me. So now this Whenever you create this trigger, this trigger will get executed on any create, alter, and drop statements. Now, DML trigger. Please keep in mind, as, as on the slide one, when using D, DML and even the DDL trigger, uh, when the trigger gets executed by a normal user, that is a create, uh, alter, drop, or insert update of, of a normal user, the trigger gets executed by the privileges of that particular user and not SA or any other privileged account. That means to properly use a DML trigger or a DDL trigger as well for uh, uh, executing commands, we must allow, now either we must do something like this, that is grant impersonate on login SA to public. This, uh, please keep in mind what we are doing here. We are uh, providing impersonate uh, privileges or opportunities to anyone with who can connect to the database. So this is not recommended in an actual test because introducing vulnerability or uh, 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 lowering the security of any client or any uh, organization we are working with is not at all advised. Even if you are completely uh, sure that you are the only one who is attacking a particular machine or application, this is not advised, uh, at least not without consulting the stakeholders. Uh, so with that, we can uh, create a trigger, a DML trigger using this command. Now logon triggers. A logon trigger executes after the authentication phase of uh, uh, logging, but before the session is established. That means a logon trigger can be used even with a logon failure of a low privilege user as well. A very good knocking mechanism. Uh, uh, you, you just try a logon, logon with uh, uh, the, the low privilege user, knock knock. If, even if it fails, your trigger will get executed. Once again, if XPCMD shell is already enabled, we can use 
uh, this so you may notice that in all the cases we are using the create trigger it is the uh, for statement for DDL login events for insert update delete for logon it is the for statement which governs the type of the trigger uh, we can list all the triggers on a box so I'm not going to show you uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the triggers that you can try on your own and uh, later on so what are the triggers here no triggers on this box let's see if okay we can list triggers on a database using power up sql we can list get sql trigger ddl to list ddl triggers dml to list the uh, dml triggers now the next persistence opportunity is provided by registry so sql server provides stored procedures to interact with windows registry experience right so there are so many of them if you have a look uh, at uh, this Microsoft link uh, three I am very interested in these three are the well-known ones XP reg write which needs this admin of course to write to registry uh, reg read limited read for public even for public role and reg read key once again needs this admin please keep in mind that even with this admin privileges the sys admin is not always admin at the uh, OS level so you cannot write wherever you want using reg write it is severely restricted and you may like to query this uh, to have a look at this link uh, for that but if our uh, sys admin that is our sql server service account runs with local admin privileges we can do something like this so what we are doing here we are create uh, we are uh, creating a a registry key SQL server update in the run registry uh, which runs whenever a machine reboots and what it does it downloads and executes a partial payload or if, if uh, we have local admin privileges that is our SQL server service account has local admin privileges we can do something like this what we are doing here the uh, we are adding registry uh, we are adding a debugger to the utilman.exe utilman.exe is the executable which runs with system privileges when you run window key plus u on unlocked machines of course we can uh, in place of just simply running cmd.exe uh, we can always download and execute a powershell script now another interesting uh, use case is of reg read so this is how reg read can be used to read registry keys uh, in case we have uh, enough privileges to read that is says admin to read registry keys from uh, this path okay so this command is a bit mixed up so I need to move this So we can use get SQL recover uh, PW auto logon to read uh, auto logon passwords if they are there from registry. Auto logon passwords, as the name suggests, are used by Windows to automatically log in a user, and the password is stored in a reversible format. So hands on for this is to change the value of XP reg write allowed paths to allow a non-admin user to write to the registry run key to persist on a system. So you need to change the value of XP reg write. We are assuming that our, the SQL server registry key and on which database uh, you have to do this wherever you find the SQL, that SQL server service is running as a local administrator. Just need to uh, try this. If you have local admin privileges, change the value of XP reg write allowed paths this is a registry key uh, to allow a non-admin user write to the registry run key to persist on a system where would you get the path to the key on this link uh, here so uh, that would be all about uh, uh, persistence using SQL server we uh, discussed uh, four or five ways of persisting on a SQL server. 
and also on the OS with the help of SQL Server once we have sysadmin privileges. So that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.